Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Dare Bullock. He's with the University of Kentucky, is a beef genetics specialist there. This time of year, there's a lot of bull sales that are happening. And when people are looking, a lot of times we fall into the tradition of doing the same thing over and over again, but we might really need to look at our genetic program. I would hope so. That's uh, it's 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 the foundation of your herd or your genetics, and so uh, and I think you're right, Joanna. We get very complacent, and, and an area that that probably hurts us the most in is that we really sometimes slack off on our crossbreeding. I think everybody kind of understands that crossbreeding is a good thing. It can actually add twelve to twenty five percent to production uh, on the production end, and that's with no additional cost. And so uh, the return on investment there is pretty good. And so, but we lose focus. Uh, we, we, you know, have, have been doing the same way. We've we've been using a particular breed of bull and we like that breed and we, and we kind of just get into the same mode of, of going back to that same breed. If we would do something just as simple as add one other breed or maybe two and then rotate between those breeds every four years, uh, we can greatly improve our, our overall efficiency of our herd. Uh, and the biggest thing it helps is reproduction. And we all know that the more calves we take to the market, the better off we are. And so if I'm thinking about introducing one of these other breeds into my herd, what are the, some of the things that I need to look at with bulls? First of all, do some research, find out, you know, what breed kind of complements your management, what you're trying to do on your operation. And then when you go to try and find a specific bull within the breed, we need to look at several things. First, the bull has to be reproductively sound. Best way to do that is have your vet do a breeding soundness exam to make sure. And that should actually be done every year before the breeding season, about 30 days before the breeding season. You need to look for a bull that's structurally correct. Uh, that's a heritable trait. So if we buy a bull with bad structure, his daughters that we're going to be trying to keep in our herd 10 to 12 years, if they have bad structure, they won't be around that long. And so we need to, to look for a bull with good structure to pass that trait on. We also need to visually appraise. We're in the beef business, so we need to look for muscling and some things like that in, in the bull as well. But the one I want us to focus on is, is performance. How good is that bull's calves going to be? Uh, and the best way to do that is with what we call expected progeny differences or EPDs. And so that's the tool that we really need our producers focusing on to, to pinpoint that bull that they need to buy. And, you know, sometimes you really need to take a look at that and discern what you need for your operation. You might need a heifer bull for your farm. Everybody always says, well, I, I, I got the catalog and there's 30 EPDs there. How can I, you know, look at all those numbers? Well, you really don't have to. Uh, what you need to do is for your operation, decide what traits can put money in your pocket or what traits might take money out of your pocket. And just focus on those traits. Some of the maternal traits, milking ability, uh, reproductive traits, some things like that. And always growth is gonna be a factor, right? And, and because we do get paid by the pound. And so if you're selling weaned calves, look at that weaning weight EPD. If you're selling after backgrounding, look at the yearling weight EPD. If you're selling carcasses or, or you know, taking them all the way and selling freezer beef or something, then that's the carcass weight EPD to look at. But, but yeah, it, it, it's customized. Each individual would need to find those traits that are important to them and, and make the proper selection. Absolutely. And now they've added the genomic testing. And so how should producers look at that? It's a good point, and it's a great tool that we have uh, for bulls that we now can get what we call genomically enhanced EPDs. When you're looking at those EPDs of a bull that has been genomically tested, those genomically enhanced EPDs have additional value in terms of accuracy, how accurate that EPD is, is if we had gotten a full calf crop from that bull. We have multiple fact sheets. If you can go on to the, um, the Animal and Food Sciences website uh, and select the, the beef extension in, in the pub section, uh, we have multiple uh, fact sheets that deal with crossbreeding, uh, that also deal with, um, with the EPDs, how to properly uh, select for EPDs that I think a lot of good information that's available there. And, and as you know, we also have the Kentucky Beef Book, um, and there's a chapter in there on genetics that could help producers out as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.